Good evening friends, I am Siddhartha Dash, welcoming you all to our new video lecture on Sunshine Classes. Hope you liked our first video that was on the economics of India, the basics. Today I am going to discuss about a topic on geography, the very important topic that is the monsoon of India. How the monsoon comes to India, about the onset of monsoon, the entire process of monsoon, all these things I am going to discuss today. And sir, if you like our videos, then please share it don't forget to subscribe us and please 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 press the bell icon so that uh, you can see our next video also because in our coming days we are com coming up with a good number of video lectures so today's topic is monsoon and uh, monsoon the word monsoon comes from an arabic word mosim and mosim means seasonal change in the direction of winds my friends the monsoon of india is dominated by two different winds one is the southwest monsoon which comes from the southwestern part of india from the ocean to the land and during the winter we see another monsoon wind that is the northeast wind which comes from the northeastern part of india so there are two different winds coming from two different directions so this change in the direction of wind this is known as monsoon monsoon means rain now it is rainy season we are eagerly waiting for our rain to come we are eagerly waiting for our monsoon to come so let us discuss monsoon today the entire mass of india which is 32 lakhs 87,263 square kilometer it is composed of two parts the northern part of India, it is landlocked. India has seven land neighbors and the northern part is landlocked. But the southern part, in the three south parts of southern India, there are oceans. In the western side, there is Arabian Sea. In the eastern side, there is Bay of Bengal. And in south, you can see the Indian Ocean. Due to this pressure imbalance and temperature imbalance that takes place in the land mass and the sea, the monsoon winds start traveling to India during the summer. Sir, we know one thing that water has maximum heat capacity. But the heat capacity of land mass is less than that of water. So, land mass becomes hot earlier and they cools down also early. But water, it takes time to get heated. It takes time to get cooled down. So due to this temperature difference, there is a pressure imbalance caused in the land mass. Let me explain you in brief. During the month of April, May, the sun shines vertically over the Tropic of Cancer. Tropic of Cancer passes through the middle of India it passes through the eight states of India. You can see here it is the Tropic of Cancer. It passes through the Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Tripura, Mizoram. The sun gives its vertical rays over the Tropic of Cancer. So this area is highly heated up. And there is also the third desert in the northwestern part of India that during that period the temperature of this northern India may be more than 45 degrees centigrade some parts of the desert India experience a temperature to even of 50 degrees centigrade the entire northern India then experience the heat wave of the loo so the land mass is highly heated but what happens to the water body since the water body has a higher heat capacity than the land mass so it takes time to get heated so the land mass has a higher heat higher temperature so the air adjacent to the land mass in northern India they get heated earlier due to the and tremendous heat air adjacent to the land surface gets heated and it goes up whenever the air gets heated it expands its pressure drops it goes up so in northern india 
tremendous heat air gets heated it expands it goes up this way an area of low pressure is created in the northwestern part of india so during summer from april may and june there is a area of low pressure but the ocean water is at a relatively high pressure zone since there is a pressure gradient between the ocean and the land so to fill up this vacuum air will flow from the ocean to the land mass so from june air we start rotating from the indian ocean via the arabian sea and the bay of bengal towards the highly heated land mass of northern india since this is coming from southwest we call it the southwest monsoon rain this southwest monsoon rain is responsible for maximum rainfall in india in indian rainfall out of 100% rainfall 70% rainfall is caused by monsoon winds and out of these two monsoon winds 86% rain is caused by southwest monsoon wind and the rest month rain is caused by the northeast monsoon wind which blows in winter season so during summer southwest monsoon wind blow and during winter northeast monsoon wind blow during summer southwest monsoon will blow from water to land mass but the reverse will happen during winter when the water body will be heated and the land mass will be less heated because that time during the month of november and december there will be winter in the northern part of india so land now air will blow from the land mass to the water body this will be known as northeast monsoon rain when south west monsoon rain starts and it goes to the land area then this south west monsoon wind which takes with it moisture to the north to the northwestern part of india this causes rainfall in india there is a very simple mechanism due to this pressure in difference between the northern india and the water body water body has a high, is at a high pressure zone northern india is a low pressure zone so moisture laden or water vapor laden air will flow from water body to land mass but when it goes there it goes up when it goes up this air becomes cool and when it cools down the moisture or the water vapor which was inside it it is condensed it becomes water and it falls down this is rainfall in india during summer season and then again the air will come back to the water body during the summer and in winter the reverse will take place my friends we all know that during the summer the sun is giving his vertical rays over the tropic of cancer so the pressure belt will go up from the zero degree equator to the tropic of cancer and since the pressure belts go up the intertropical convergence zones it is known as ipcz intertropical convergence zones it will go to the equator so since suppose this is tropic of cancer now intertropical convergence zones this becomes the intertropical convergence zones trade winds will meet here from southern part air will go this way and from eastern part trade winds will go this way so this is actually south west monsoon but when it answer enters here due to coriolis effect it goes to the right side due to coriolis effect the south west monsoon has a tendency to deflect to its right and it causes rainfall in the southern part of india 
29th May, the southwest monsoon causes rainfall in Andaman Nicobar Islands. The Bay of Bengal branch of the southwest monsoon first causes rainfall in Andaman Nicobar Islands, then it goes straight away to Myanmar. It has a tendency to enter inside Myanmar, but it is obstructed by the Arakan Yuma mountain range. So when it gets obstructed by the Arakan Yuma mountain range, it comes inside, causes rainfall in entire Northeast India, Bangladesh, Tripura and the West Bengal. So this Arabian Sea branch has two big branches. One branch causes rainfall in the Northeast India, another branch goes to the northern part of India. And you know, one place is the Anmal Syndrome, which is in the Khasi Hill. There are three hills uh, in Meghalaya, you might have known their name, Garo, Khashi and Jayantia. There is one place, Charapunji and Mosinam. These are in Khasi Hills. Khasi, in Khasi Hills, the air gets trapped because all the mountains are this way. So when the cloud bearing air gets inside, there is a funnel effect. Due to this funnel effect, maximum rain fall happens here. Mosinam is the place in the world which experiences maximum rainfall due to this funnel effect. Now, so we there see the onset of monsoon on the 29th May in the Arabian, uh, in, in the Bay of Bengal region at Andaman Nicobar Islands. What happens to the Arabian Sea branch? It causes, starts causing rainfall in Kerala and it enters Kerala on 1st June. See the geographical scenario of the southern India. Between the western coast and the big and huge western Ghat, there is a plain which is known as Konkon coast in northern part and Malabar coast in southern part. This branch of Arabian Sea trade wind, it gets obstruction by the south, uh, the western Ghat mountain range and that's why tremendous rainfall happens in the southern part of India, especially in the western part of the western Ghat. Kerala starts experiencing rainfall from 1st June, 5th June, Goa and 10th June, the monsoon winds enters Mumbai. 15th June, the entire northern India experiences rain. During that time, the Arabian Sea branch and the Bay of Bengal branch they meet in the northern part of India and causes havoc rainfall in Delhi, Punjab and Uttarakhand. Sometimes we get in news, heavy flood in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Uttarakhand. This is due to the marching of these two and branches of southwest monsoon rain. Then it goes up, goes up, goes up. By 15 July, this southwest monsoon reaches Pakistan. But why this great Indian desert? Because of the presence of this Arabian lake. You can see the traveling of the southwest monsoon is parallel to the location of the Arabian leaves. So they goes this way. They are obstructed by the Arabian leaves and they can't enter Rajasthan. So they cannot cause rainfall in the entire Rajasthan, entire desert place of Rajasthan. So there has been a desert due to the scanty rainfall. Here also in the southern part of India, this part of the western Ghat experiences huge rainfall. But in the eastern part of uh, the western Ghat uh, mountains, there is less rainfall because here the mountain it causes obstruction so there has been a drought prone area in the eastern side of the western Ghat mountain ranges so this uh, southwest monsoon it causes huge rainfall in india and uh, maximum rainfall causes in the northeast part of india especially in meghalaya and the west coast of india second the northern plain of India, West Bengal, Tripura and least rainfall is uh, there in the right side of 
the west ghat and of course in the mountainous range of jammu and kashmir by 15th august the southwest monsoon causes rainfall to the entire part of india now it's time to go back to its own place that is the seas the oceans the mountain uh, this monsoon wants to go back further but it is obstructed by the himalayas and it starts coming back again but when it starts coming back during the winter it is known as northeast monsoon or it is sometimes also known as retreating monsoon since it is coming back but while coming it it is coming from the land to the sea and when it enters the sea it again get rain bearing moisture so the monsoon wind on its retreat it didn't have any vapor or moisture but when it enters the sea it gets again moisture and vapor so after having moisture and vapor it enters the tamil nadu it enters the tamil nadu and causes rainfall in tamil nadu during winter so when the whole india gets rain tamil nadu is dry and when tamil nadu gets rain the whole india is dry remember my friends tamil nadu gets rain during the winter season due to the presence of northeast monsoon this monsoon winds are very important for us they are highly beneficial for the agrarian economy of india you, you know my friends indian economy is an agricultural economy and for the right production of crops at the right time this presence of uh, monsoon wind is very important in india i hope you liked my uh, small lecture on uh, indian uh, monsoon and uh, please like it please share it and please 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 subscribe our channel we shall come back again with uh, new videos thank you